Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Mashburn and I am the director of SoCal Sea Turtles here in San Diego, California. And today I'm going to be talking with you about Southern California sea turtles, where they are and how you can help save them. Many people are not aware that our state marine reptile in California is in fact a sea turtle, the largest of all of the sea turtles, the leatherback sea turtle. Along with being the largest, leatherbacks are the only sea turtle with a soft, rubbery shell made up of skin as opposed to hard carapace scutes. And they also have one of the longest and most impressive migrations of any sea turtle on the planet. This is a map of the migration of our California leatherbacks. They forage for jellyfish here and also in Oregon and Washington, but they have to mate and lay their eggs on leatherback nesting beaches as far away as Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and Fiji. And then they come back to California, Oregon, and Washington when they're done at the breeding grounds. The next species that we have here in California is Mexico's most common marine reptile, the olive ridley sea turtle. And these turtles are famous for their mass nesting arribadas, or arrivals, of hundreds or thousands of individuals all nesting at the same time, which scientists believe is a technique that they use to avoid predators by inundating the beach with millions of eggs. The olive ridley sea turtle is one of the most widespread sea turtles, as you can see from the map here. They're found in most temperate and tropical seas. We also have loggerhead sea turtles in Southern California. This is a photo of a young loggerhead tagged by two Southwest Fisheries Science Center scientists here off the coast of San Diego. And then these turtles, when they are old enough to breed, have a phenomenal migration all the way across the Pacific Ocean to the beaches of Japan. Southern California's resident sea turtles are the green sea turtle, Chelonia midas, and this photograph was actually taken in La Jolla in San Diego. Their adult weight is three to 500 pounds making them the largest of the hard shell turtles. And their adult carapace or shell length is between three and over five feet. So general green sea turtle facts, as I said in the last slide, they're the largest of all the hard shelled sea turtles. But interestingly enough, they have a comparatively small head and rounded beak for their body size. This also makes them quite difficult to see when they put their heads out of the water to breathe because they are so small compared to the body. They have a lifespan of at least 80 years and sexual maturity occurs quite late between the ages of 20 and 40 years old depending on the population and location. Here's a beautiful shot of one of our local San Diego green sea turtles feeding on eelgrass, one of their favorite foods. Adult green turtles in most parts of the world are herbivorous, feeding primarily on seagrasses and algae, like this Atlantic green turtle here. This vegetarian diet is thought to give them the greenish colored fat called calipi, from which the green turtles got their name. As you can see here in this photo, at the turtle crawls in Key West in the 1970s, it was legal in the United States to harvest sea turtles and ingest food items such as turtle soup. Of course, with the Endangered Species Act and Marine Mammal Protection Act in 1973, um, sea turtles were listed as endangered and were, it was no longer legal to eat them. Hatchlings and young adult turtles are omnivorous, meaning they eat both plant and animal material. And juvenile green sea turtles all over the world eat mostly invertebrates, jellies, snails, nudibranchs, sea slugs, and squid. Adults in the East Pacific, however, continue to eat seagrasses and seaweed as well as invertebrates throughout their lives, making them a little bit different 
than their Atlantic counterparts. Now on to nesting, one of the most studied and most interesting parts of a green sea turtle's life. Adults between the ages of 25 and 80 years old return to the same beaches where they were born, called natal beaches, every two to four years to lay eggs. And green sea turtles are one of the only sea turtle species that does return to the same beach where they were born, as opposed to just the same area like most sea turtles. Females will nest approximately once every two weeks while at their natal beach. And each female will lay an average of five nests or clutches per season. Each clutch contains between 100 and 300 eggs, which means one female could produce up to 675 baby turtles per breeding season. This brings us to our boffs, or big old fertile females. Larger, older females lay larger clutches of eggs and usually pick more secure places to nest than younger, less experienced turtles. Big old fertile females are some of the most valuable sea turtles to conserve for this reason. Once the eggs are laid, they incubate for approximately two months. Unfortunately, very few hatchlings will survive to reproductive age. There is a resident population of East Pacific green sea turtles living between San Diego and Los Angeles, California. While most green sea turtles have yellowish skin and light tan to brown carapaces, like this green sea turtle in the Atlantic Ocean, East Pacific green sea turtles have darker heart-shaped carapaces and darker skin like this green sea turtle that was taken out of the water to get its weight and measurement um, here in San Diego, California. This is why our East Pacific green sea turtles are sometimes called the Pacific black turtle. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the life cycle of a green sea turtle from Southern California. And we're going to start all the way down in southern Mexico in the Revilla Jijido Islands. Once a turtle finds a mate, they will copulate and then the female will lay her eggs in the Revilla Jijido Islands. Once the eggs hatch, the babies will make their way up the coast of the Baja Peninsula until they reach their feeding grounds in Southern California. Now, how do scientists study these turtles? We're going to talk about one special turtle. His name is Trey, and he was the first adult male turtle ever tracked from San Diego all the way to the Revilla Jijido Islands and back proving that these two populations in very different locations are actually one population that is moving back and forth. This is Trey's track, all the way from San Diego Bay down to the Revilla Jijido Islands. The red line is the track. And this helped scientists confirm that these populations were connected. Now, on to the less lighthearted news. How are we affecting these turtles in these very urbanized areas? If we look at the known causes of death for Southern California sea turtles between 2010 and 2016, we see a very clear picture of the threats that urban turtles face here in Southern California. If we look at this graph, we see that 13 turtles died after boat collisions, two turtles died after fishery interactions, and no turtles died after power plant interactions, disease, or cold stunning, which are all reasons that a turtle might strand or need assistance. Why are boat strikes so dangerous for these turtles? Really, it's because of their anatomy. The boat propellers slice through a sea turtle's carapace, which damages their lungs and other internal organs, 
and gives them irreparable damage to their carapace and internal organs. So how can you help our local sea turtles? Number one, obey speed limits when you're on the water and look for surfacing sea turtles near shore, especially at sunset. This is when our turtles are less active and also when they tend to spend the most time near shore and close to our boats and jet skis. Number two, report all your sea turtle sightings to NOAA at www.socalseaturtles.org. Number three, pick up non-biodegradable trash from beaches, waterways, and shorelines. You've all seen the video of sea turtles eating everything from plastic bags to soda can rings to straws. And because they're such indiscriminate feeders, we need to be careful about what we put into their habitat. Number four, tell boaters, family, and friends about how they can help save our sea turtles. And number five, support the SoCal Sea Turtles Boating Around Turtles Speed Sign Initiative. We're trying to put these slow sea turtle habitat signs up at every boat launch in San Diego and Los Angeles County, and we need your help. Thank you so much for being here and learning more about our Southern California sea turtles.